So now in this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of the uh, circuit you see here. There's a little more we added to it. We'll address that as the time comes. So this is the 555 timer wired in a stable multi-vibrator mode. So it keeps flashing either one or two LEDs on and off for uh, this demonstration video. So you can see we got pin one, the ground pin, pin two trigger, output and reset. We got the control pin there. Threshold, discharge, and VCC. Five, six, seven, eight. Working our way up. So, this will be a step by step build. We don't have to uh, look at uh, those pin names coming up. But, in any case, I will uh, clear up the board and we'll get to working on building this circuit. So, now with the board clear off, we look at uh, three jumpers here. So, that's a uh, pin one, four, and eight right there. The 555 timer works on a wide range of voltages since we will protect the LED with a 1 kilo ohm resistor uh, to begin with anyways we could go up to 12 volts but we're only going to deal with 5 volts so in any case we have uh, pin number 8 to the positive rail there pin number 1 to the negative rail this is how the 555 timer is powered and does what it does there's also three basically uh, resistors within the component and uh, equal values you tap into between uh, two of them you get one third of the power supply voltage and then you tap into the other two of them to where they connect you get one third of or uh, two thirds of the power supply voltage that comes into play in this circuit and uh, we will see the effects of that later on also pin 4 is connected to the positive rail that is the reset pin it is waiting for a low signal to reset the pin that overwhelms anything else going on and uh, we do not ever want that in this video we don't want to interrupt it we want it to do its thing so we just put a jumper directly to the positive rail you could also use a low value resistor or something high value resistor but uh, jumper uh, directly to positive rail is the most effective and uh, it's perfectly fine and so that's it for uh, these jumpers here let's add another jumper while we're here it's pretty straightforward as I said before we uh, look at one-third and two-thirds of the power supply voltage the two pins that are actually going to do that in this case we eliminated pin number four from doing anything but that's going to be pin number two and pin number six they have to be looking at the same voltage so we're going to take a jumper here and just connect them directly to together so pin number two is going to respond with uh, one third of the power supply voltage or less and then pin number six is going to respond with two thirds of the power supply voltage or more so now we're going to get to the timing part of the circuit as I've said before we're going to have changing voltages basically from uh, one third of the power supply voltage to two thirds to one third to two thirds that's going to be this capacitor charging and discharging so we have to get the capacitor charging so a resistor has to come from the positive rail so the first one actually comes from the positive rail to pin number seven right there and I'm using one kilo ohm resistors because they make things easy we can make this circuit with just one kilo ohm resistors and uh, the way that I have it set up so one kilo ohm positive rail two pin seven up there that is the discharge pin and we're going to need another resistor for this circuit from pin 7 to pin 6. As you can see that uh, if we add a diode it will bypass that uh, resistor. But we are going to put a 1 kilo ohm resistor again to keep the math easy from uh, pin 7 to pin 6. And so I have this one here. I'm going to have to kind of squeeze the leads together. And I thought I had one with the lead squeezed together. There we go. We're going to 7 to 6. Right there. So as you can see, we got a path here to charge the capacitor. And for this video, 1000 microfarad capacitor uh, works really uh, easy. You can use a smaller value capacitor uh, perfectly fine. You will just get a faster flash if you keep using these resistors. If you use a smaller capacitor, you probably won't use a larger one. But if you use a smaller one, you'll get a faster flash. But you can just use higher value resistors to slow down the flash. So it's a uh, current flow. Whatever uh, makes 
current take longer to flow, so a larger capacitor will take more current to charge up to a voltage, will make it go slower. And uh, if you uh, reduce the size of the resistors, which you really want to do, that will make more current, because one kilo ohm is kind of the, the bottom, that will make more current, the capacitor will charge faster. Larger value capacitor, uh, resistors, it will take longer for the current to charge the capacitor you'll get a slower flash so we'll see that coming up so in any case we really have all the timing that we have to put together right now so just remember larger values slower smaller values faster and you can go large on the resistors small on the capacitor to balance that out and uh, vice versa so we're not going to dwell too much on the timing in this video so for a load because Right now we're we're really done wiring. We could add the uh, diode, and uh, but we won't see anything going on unless we get like an oscilloscope and measure the voltage at the output. So we're going to add an LED for visual effect. We will put it here. So we can go up to about 12 volts with a one kilo ohm resistor. Since we're using five volts, we could go down to about 220 ohms in that range. But. Uh, to keep this video easy, we're just going to stay with the 1 kilo ohm resistor for now. And so, 1 kilo ohm resistor, we're going to go one spot away from the negative jumper there, going to ground. As you can see, the LED goes to ground. And the LED, we're going to use a red LED. The uh, long lead, the anode, goes to the resistor short lead. The cathode goes down one row. It's a diode, it only conducts in one direction. And so now, we are really done with this circuit. That's all we really need right there. And you can see the red LED flashing on and off. So it is not very bright. So we can get away with the one kilo ohm here. Also, you could set the uh, the lighting lower right there. It'll look brighter. So if you don't want it terribly bright, this will be okay. But it'd be better to use a 220 ohm resistor. But I wanted to keep all the numbers on the data sheet pretty much the same. So. There are just tons of different modifications, small modifications you can make to the circuit. So now it is brighting, uh, it is flashing brighter. So another thing we can do that I did not put on the data sheet yet. So we'll get to this uh, diode coming up first. We have the LED lighting up when the output is high. So we have a higher voltage than ground. When the LED is off, we have ground there and ground there. That is what the uh, the uh, discharge pin does so the capacitor charges up and then when uh, it charges to two-thirds of the power supply voltage it sets the uh, output low so the LED goes off and discharges through that resistor through the discharge pin that's why it's called discharge pin and so it charges through two resistors and then discharges through one but it's setting the output high and low based on whether it's charging or discharge so Sometimes the output goes low. That means you can put it to the positive rail. And we're going to do that. I'm going to take a uh, one kilo ohm resistor again and go one spot away from the red jumper there. That goes to the positive rail. So from the output to one spot away from that jumper. And we're going to add a blue LED. So now the long lead, the anode, has to go towards the positive rail. Short lead, the cathode, to the resistor and we will pop that in there and you can see that even with four times the resistance the uh, blue LED is quite a bit uh, brighter but uh, we have that to that same output right there both of the resistors to that output so blue LEDs are just naturally brighter that's just uh, unfortunately the way it is and so we're gonna yank that out grab a 4700 ohm resistor for the blue LED and you can see it looks like it's about the same brightness as the red LED with 220 ohms so let's uh, there we go don't want to go into that spot so we'll just put in that spot so we have the two outputs. so you may notice the red LED looks to be on a bit longer than the blue LED the blue LED kind of turns on. It's on for a bit, but then it goes off. That is what the diode here is for. So you may also want the red LED to only be on 
about exactly as long as it is off. So it's normally on a little bit more. So we got the LED here. Of course, it's a diode too, just like the other ones, like the LEDs. So we have to put it in the uh, proper direction. We put the cathode towards the positive side of the capacitor there. The anode we put to uh, pin 7. So cathode, you see a uh, dash there. There's a band where that dash is. So that's how we wire it. And so what this does, so as I said before, it's uh, equalized the times. You may notice the red LED is not on quite as long and the blue LED is on for just a little bit longer. So while the capacitor is charging, so it used to charge through two resistors, the output was high for a bit longer because it was charging through two resistors. And then it was discharging through one resistor. And so it was discharging faster, then it was charging. So now, while we are charging, we are going through one resistor. Now that applies when they're equal values, I should say. So, but we're now we're charging through one, one kilo ohm resistor, and the rest is going through the diode there. So the current's going that way through one resistor and the diode's not really slowing down the uh, current after the uh, one kilo ohm resistor does. So capacitor charges and then a uh, pin 7 starts discharging. It will not discharge through the uh, diode. It will all discharge through the single resistor now. So we got one kilo ohm going that way, one kilo ohm going that way. So the uh, charge and discharge will be about the same time based on a one kilo ohm resistor in this particular circuit and uh, so that's why you'll often see the dial there you don't need it there if you don't care about this uh, slight difference in uh, time there and uh, so the red LED is actually on probably about twice as long as the blue LED but uh, that's not horrible but again the diode evens it out so it's up to you as I said before there's a lot of small modifications you can make to the circuit and then of course a lot of big modifications you can get uh, the a stable mode and uh, the other 555 timers to do a whole bunch of stuff there's a lot of people that just love this timer and uh, there's groups that get together trying to make new circuits with them so in any case that is it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you want to see more uh, diagrams like this, consider donating to my Patreon page. I put the link down below. Uh, otherwise, generally, I make videos based on how much time it takes me to make them and then how many views they get. And the diagram videos don't get more views, but if people really appreciate the diagrams, the more Patreon support I get, the more diagrams I make. And also, I may just uh, reuse a lot of uh, diagrams because uh, sometimes the video gets more views the second time you upload it than the first time. But in any case, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.